just a second while the there we are live. Hey everybody, uh, welcome to our final Google Hangout preview for our upcoming ZBrush character sculpting webinar with Marvel Entertainment digital artist Josh Herman. We're very excited about this webinar. It's our very first live ZBrush webinar. This has become a critical tool in the Creature Effects Artist uh, Toolkit. You need to know the traditional stuff, but you also need to know how to sculpt in ZBrush. So we're really excited to be doing this with you, Josh. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. How are you guys doing? Uh, awesome. Very excited for Saturday. We, we get to yes. hang out with you for eight hours on Saturday uh, as you sculpt Dan Luvisi's rendition of uh, Venom. So that's going to be cool. And then we're going to finish up the following Saturday. So two consecutive yeah. Saturdays watching. Uh, up. And uh, now I'm going to mute my YouTube. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm hearing my YouTube feed and the Google Plus feed. So Dan Luvisi's Venom is your subject. You're going to be turning him into a 3D sculpture using ZBrush. And we're going to be able to watch the whole process. Uh, Tell us, tell us about some of the stuff we can look forward to uh, in the in the webinar on Saturday. Yeah, sure. Uh, pretty much what we're going to do is we're going to start from scratch. We're going to start from pretty much nothing. Uh, we're going to use Dan's uh, art as our as our concept as our basis, and we're going to try to uh, sculpt a bust. So probably you know from shoulders up. Um, so you you know a lot of the things if you if you look at you know anywhere at sideshow or whatever. They have a lot of legendary busts or, or life-size busts. So we're going to be doing something equivalent to that. And the end goal is also to be like a, a traditional statue in the same way where it's going to be practical. So something that will be printed out. Um, but as far as the actual work we're going to be doing is you know, starting from scratch uh, in ZBrush, probably using some uh, Dynamesh and some Z-Remesher, some poly painting stuff. And then just my workflow as far as overall tools and... Uh, you know my brushes that I like to use and all that kind of you know, my, my just overall workflow of how I'm going to go through it. Uh, so, so we've had a few questions um, from interested students in the the level of expertise in ZBrush that is required to get something out of this uh, mm -hmm. webinar. I know that you're not going to be teaching the basics of ZBrush. You're assuming right. some knowledge of the tools, but Will someone who's relatively new to ZBrush uh, be able to follow along? I know you don't use that many tools, so right. what, uh, what's your thoughts on that? I think I think it's applicable to a beginner as long as they can kind of understand the interface of, of ZBrush and kind of know the basics of what the buttons are. Mm -hmm. uh, because I'm I'm not going to slow down too much to explain what each button does or what how each brush works or you know what the basic tools are. Um, but I think once you get inside of ZBrush, there's not too there's a lot of features, but there's not too many features that I'm going to use. Uh, a lot of them are just going to be pretty standard things. Um, so great. As long so, as they know the basics, it's totally applicable to a beginner. Great. So that answers the question. There's something for uh, every level of expertise. You know, it would be great now uh, for those who haven't met you in our mm -hmm. previous two previews, it would be great to show some of your work. So we are being joined by Chris Vaughn, our moderator and Stan Winston School Live Coordinator. And Chris is going to bring up some of Josh's work for you to check out. We're going to check out Josh's CG Hub page. And you'll, you'll see how talented this man is. Again, if you're just joining us, this is our final preview. This one's just a hangout. We've actually done some ZBrush sculpting with Josh over the last two weeks for the previous previews, but this one is just a conversation. We're welcoming you in. We would love to know if you have any questions for us. Please just type them in the YouTube comments section below the player. Any questions you have about the webinar or Josh Herman's time at uh, Marvel or Legacy Effects, just type them in there. And uh, what we're doing is basically telling you about his upcoming webinar, 16 hours of live instruction from a top uh, industry professional. Again, Josh works at Marvel, so he's working on some of your favorite movies as we speak, bringing his ZBrush sculpting to the table, and he's going to be sharing his techniques with you guys. Pretty exciting opportunity. 
So I see that we have your CG Hub page up. Chris, okay. can you make that our primary screen? Or is that something we do within the, uh, within the player? All right, I'm assuming that everyone is seeing primarily the uh, CG Hub page. Josh, why don't you talk us through some of the images we're seeing? And uh, I'm assuming most of this is ZBrush work, right? Uh, yes, I'm just trying to figure out where to look to see what he's seeing. All right. Um... Hey, Chris, can you unmute yourself and give uh, Josh and I a little guidance? Let's see. Yeah, sorry. Um, bottom right of your screen, Josh. Bottom right of your screen, if you will click on that little window, it will pull it up full screen for you. Where you see your artwork? There it is. Yeah, there that's it is. Up. Yeah, up. I think it just lost video for me. There it is. Now it's back. That's um, the one that I'm looking at right now is... Uh, for a book I recently did, which is called Essence Creatures, which I just happen to have a copy of right here. Um, it's released by Ballistic Publishing. And so it's me and si uh, seven other artists that all did work for it. So it's it's kind of similar in, in a way to the class, but more about a process of how I think about something. So that one is one of the main images that I did, which is called the Redfin Slarks. Um, <laughs> So it's just like a, a school of, you know, these kind of lizard, shark combined creatures. And so you can kind of see the, the evolution of my sculpt there where it starts as a very simple simple mesh and then I kind of work my way through the, through the sculpt to kind of fi finally get to my final realized sculpt. So in, in this piece particularly, because I feel like it's kind of an evolutionary... Um, looking creature. I kind of liked that the, the evolution of the sculpt itself almost looked like that. Um, so that one has three images, one of which is just like you're seeing there, the sculpt. Uh, the side view, which is something if I was going to do a design for a director or something, I might do something a little more simple like this so that they can they can just kind of see what the design is, not in context, but just something that's more simple to show it off as a, as a character. And then the top one with all of them is more of like a keyframe or a story moment. Um, so that one's to show, you know, there's something a little different. Well, in their environment. Uh, th and this is all this is all ZBrush sculpture. So you're Correct. going to be sharing all the t basically uh, all the techniques you used to create these wonderful creatures. You'll be sharing uh, mm -hmm. in your in your webinar. Awesome. Let's uh, let's look through some other some other sure. stuff. And Chris, I'm noticing in the YouTube feed that Josh's art is not going full screen. Is that something that you can control uh, from your end to make sure that when Josh is talking about the art, that's what we're seeing full screen? Uh, no, it, it's not. It's a uh, limitation of the Hangout. Um, mm -hmm. Let me let me see. Hold on, just a second. All right, guys. All right, guys. Uh, we, we typically do these live. Oh, we've got an echo now too. Let's make sure you guys are wearing headphones or muted on your side. Ah, technology. <laughs> okay, so moving, I'm sorry, Team Stan Winston School. We're getting a big echo. So please make sure to mute yourselves. Okay, great, that's better. Uh, so there we go. I'm seeing some some mm -hmm. full screen stuff. Hopefully it'll transfer to you guys on YouTube. Again, we're with Josh Herman, Marvel Entertainment Digital Artist. And what is your official title there, Josh? It's more impressive than that. My official title is Marvel Visual Development Digital Sculptor. And so I work in the visual development department, which is a little different than a typical art department. Uh, we work in, on all of the movies that work through Marvel Studios. So it's starting, I guess, with the original not all of these I haven't worked on, but Iron Man, Iron Man 2, Iron Man 3, Captain America 1 and 2, Thor 1 and 2, Avengers, Ant-Man, Guardians of the Galaxy, Avengers 2. Um, all of those are overseen by one art department. Uh, if you, in a typical studio, you know, you'll work on one movie and they'll hire on an art department. And then after that, everybody leaves. And then even for an the sequel, they'll try to hire on some of the same people, but not always the same. Um, but since all these characters exist in the same world, having a, a core team that works on all of them 
uh, kind of helps unify them all. So they'll be designed by the same person throughout the lifetime of their of their you know cinematic screen time, whatever you want to call it. But uh, so I work primarily on all the CG characters. So I'm a digital sculptor. So if there's a character that's primarily CG, like Hulk or like Iron Man, um, I kind of am in charge of of taking them to a, a more you know, finish level. Even if I don't do the design, sometimes I, I work on the design or I'll present design options. Um, but most of the time, you know, I'm only working on the CG characters or things that sometimes I'll work on props as well. So I worked on like things like Thor's helmet. I'll model Thor's helmet and they'll rapid prototype it out and he'll wear it or Captain America's helmet or you know, little props like that. So a lot of do a lot of helmets and a lot of you know little specialty items that they can that we want to art direct and it's key to the character, and then we'll we'll give it to them uh, as a as an asset that they can wear. How is this a dream come true for you or what? I mean, for yeah. I know for me, I was a Marvel nut. I still have all my Marvel comics, but to be uh, working in such an integral way and to see your work on the big screen must mm-hmm. be absolutely thrilling it's really amazing like I remember being in uh, in Denver and I just decided I wanted to do art school and so I, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do and at, at that time uh, I think that was around 2007 2006 and I think Iron Man 1 and Transformers both came out around that time and I was like those are like Transformers was so cool because it was like the it was a totally new thing uh, to have the giant robots on screen uh, and then Iron Man came out, and I was like, "That suit is awesome!" Like, I can't like somebody get like gets to make that, and so I wanted to be, you know, I wanted to kind of do that. And uh, I, you know, eventually I worked my way through, and I got my chance to work on Avengers, and I got to do the suit, and I was like, "This is amazing!" And I got to do Hulk, <laughs> and then I got to do, and I eventually moved to Marvel, and so I worked on Iron Man three, and I did like six Iron Man suits, and so now. And yeah, were you working? Were you basically working from two-dimensional art for all that stuff? And yeah. you were you were the guy taking it into three dimensions. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let's talk about the whole. I know you that you worked for uh, Legacy Effects, mm-hmm. uh, fresh out of school. Yep. For, with uh, many, many, many key members of my father's team from Stan mm-hmm. Winston Studio over there at Legacy. Yep. Talk talk to us about when you knew you were going to be taking a two-dimensional Hulk and turning it into a three-dimensional Hulk, and to see mm-hmm. that process happen? Um, interesting enough, Hulk is one of the, I'm actually looking, I don't know if this is going to freak you viewers out, but they uh, oh, have, we're freaking sorry, out. There it is. This is the, this, the Hulk statue that Sideshow did, mm-hmm. so I have it just can sitting you, next to my statue. Can you turn him towards us, actually? Can yeah, you bring let me him actually on screen, just, even? Yeah, He's just, awesome. I, I'll try, not I'll to say you aren't a handsome man, bad. but, you know, <laughs> I think we'd all prefer to look at the big green guy for a minute. Sure, yeah. <laughs> So this is the one that we, this is not the exact one, this is one that was later produced by Sideshow. But, um... Uh, Paint job by Johnny Cherevka, right? No, or, for the Sideshow Jane? one, I don't know who did the paint, but the initial one was done by, I think it was either Johnny or Trevor. Yeah, so this would be the, uh, yeah. they, they send the proof, the, the master over to China, and yeah, they exactly. do their best to match the paint job. They do a nice job, but yeah, nothing it's not, can. It's not as good as Trevor or Johnny's, but of course. Uh, <laughs> it's a it's a good attempt. So t- um, talk to us back to the question. Sure. Um, you said it's been very exciting for you, obviously, to be modeling all these wonderful characters in three dimensions that we mm-hmm. all grew up with, and now you're seeing them on the big screen. Let's talk about Hulk for a second. What were the sure. challenges and uh, instructions you were given when you yeah. were translating from from two D into three dimensions? When we did Hulk, actually, that's he's one of the few characters that I didn't start with two two D art on. Um, mm-hmm. I had actually um, worked with Ryan Minerding and Charlie Wynn, who are now my bosses, um, and they had done. Ryan was working on the face, and he had done some sculpts for the face, and Charlie had done some rough sculpts for the for the body, and it was like both their first times ever using ZBrush, so they were like mm-hmm. learning the program. And so what eventually what happened is they asked me to take Ryan's heads and then kind of mod ma- like mash them onto Charlie's bodies, and then we put we you know, they uh, finalized the pose and then just kind of I, from there it was kind of like making everything work right because mm-hmm. the top doesn't match the bottom and the bottom doesn't match the top, 
and then we finalized the statue and kind of worked from there. So that was like a really collaborative thing. Mm -hmm. But that one didn't have any 2D art. So that was that was my first real, maybe not my first thing, but uh, one of the cool ones where it was like a, you're making the design as you're working on it. Like it's not mm -hmm. you don't you're not interpreting A to B. It's like you're just making it as you go. Mm -hmm. So and you know as a professional artist. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, you are translating directly from oh, yeah. a blueprint that's like, make this, that's yeah, it. Yeah. Sometimes you get a chance to bring your creative spin to things. Mm -hmm. uh, in either case, you have to find uh, the joy in it to do your job well. So yeah. I, I would like to just uh, throw out a little reminder for those who are joining us late. We are hanging out with Marvel Digital Development. What is it? <laughs> Marvel Visual Development Digital Sculptor. It's a mouthful. Marvel uh -huh. Visual Development Digital Sculptor Josh Herman, formerly of Legacy Effects. Uh -huh. This guy has been given the great opportunity to bring his ZBrush sculpting skills to the biggest movies out there, pretty much all the Marvel films uh, of the recent, of the last, what, three, four years. You've had some participation in as a ZBrush uh -huh. sculptor, whether it was at Legacy or now at Marvel. Josh yep. is going to be sharing a huge amount of information and techniques for taking your ZBrush sculpting to a professional level. We're, we have 16 hours of live online instruction with this gentleman. We're starting Saturday, and we are continuing the following Saturday, so that's December 7th to 7th, December 14th. This is, let's see, your final two days to actually sign up yeah. to participate and be with us. Uh, today's Thursday. We start Saturday morning. Uh, Chris Vaughn, if you can, Chris Vaughn is our moderator, also our Stan Winston School live coordinator. Chris, would you mind bringing up the webinar page so we can show people where to go if they're interested in spending 16 hours with us learning from Josh Herman? Uh, Chris will get on that, and while we're waiting on him to bring that up, um, oops, tell us, uh, tell us what you feel about teaching this stuff. Some artists we've approached, ooh, there, wait, before you do that, we'll come back to that. I, I see that Chris now has uh, a web page up. I'd like to oh, okay. I'd like to hand it over to you, Chris. I think that uh, you can unmute yourself and actually talk people through the webinar sign-up procedure. Copy that, Chris. Yeah, we have their stuff turned off. Um, hello everyone, uh, my name is Chris Vaughn. Um, uh, if you go to our website, uh, click on the webinars button here. It's going to pull up a, uh, a list of all of our current and past webinars. My computer is bogging down a little bit. There we go. And uh, Josh's is right here. Um, we have three levels that we're offering. We have a um, a watch and chat, which is a text-based um, uh, chat with the instructor as he goes through. Um, there is no critique on your work. Uh, we don't give a certificate or anything, but it's great if you just kind of want to follow along and and um, and watch. Uh, we the next option is the the critique, and I will tell you guys that we only have four seats left for the critique and the professionals. So they're they're fixing to go away. Uh, the critique uh, is three Chris is from Chris is from Texas. Uh, <laughs> fixing means uh, they're about to. They're all they're about to fixing. They're 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 about to go away. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Sorry for my colloquialism. Uh, no, we love it. We love it. <laughs> the uh, the with the critique, you're of course you're going to get live in class critique on your ZBrush work from Josh during the class, um, as well as um, you'll have a a forum to interact with the instructor and other students in the class. Um, you're going to get a certificate from the Stan Winston School of either completion or mastery, depending upon the the level of your skill. Uh, how well you do in the course, and um, with the professional option, which is the highest level, you get all of the critique, plus you get a one-hour career development and portfolio review, uh, like a private one-on-one -on -one with uh, 
Josh Herman. And we would love to see you guys in the class. You can come through here and, and check it all out. Maybe watch his uh, last ZBrush Creature Sculpting webinar. And I'm going to hand it back over to you, Matt. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. So that's where you guys go if you want to join us. Again, uh, today's Thursday. It starts Saturday, so you have a uh, little less than 48 hours mm -hmm. to sign up if you'd like to join us, and we really hope you can. You are going to learn more than you ever imagined. And what makes these webinars even more exciting for us is the live interaction, the community building, the fact that no matter where you are in the world, we can get to know you, we can see your work. Josh will very gently help you improve <laughs> your work, and you'll find a lot of like-minded people. That's what's been mo the most amazing for all of us about these webinars, is, is truly connecting. And it's, it's very exciting. And amazing work has come out of these webinars. So hope you can join us. Uh, Josh, back to you. Mm -hmm. I know that you are taking a quick uh, break from work to be here f uh, with us, so we're not going to go too much longer. Um, but talk to us a little bit about uh, being a professional artist and okay. how it differs from what you expected and what um, traits you find have helped you most in terms of getting work because the fact that you landed a job right out of school is very rare mm -hmm. and the fact that you have not been out of work ever since uh, is also quite rare so you're doing right. something right let's talk about some of those sure. those traits that might have helped you a lot um. I think the number one thing that I kind of I learned this in going through two schools. I went to a school in Denver for three years, and then I went to a school here in Hollywood for two years at, at Noman. Um, and that is, it's kind of built into two things, but it's work ethic is the number one. Like developing a work good work ethic, putting in the time yourself is super important. Um, but the the thing that I tell a lot of students now is, you know. When you go to a college, you know, you're kind of all the best from your department, from your high school, you're the best artist from your high school, and so it's kind of like this assemblance of people that are all pretty good. And it, it makes it easy to be, uh, to compete at your, at your college, or at your school, because you want to be the best of the best of that area. And sometimes, unfortunately, that's not good enough. Like, mm -hmm. you shouldn't be competing against the people that are directly next to you unless they're like an amazing professional artist. Like if you want to be a professional artist and you want to work professionally, you sh your, your work that you should be trying to be, that you should try to be achieved to, should be a professional's work. So look at the people you really, really like and go and try to be as good as them, not like try to barely edge out somebody in your class or somebody or whatever. Like that's, that's something that I learned at my first school because it, it didn't have as many resources, so I quickly, within a year, was the the best artist there. And I really, I, so I, I think I sat about probably around for like a year and a half, and was just like, oh, I, I'm going to get a job immediately. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> I learned about you know the real professional work, and I was like, these guys are way better than me. Like I'm not even going to get close to. Go I went to I think my at the end of my second year there. I went to either Seagraph or GDC, like one of the conferences. Uh, I think it was in San Francisco, and I went to the job fair, and I had my cards, and I, I showed my cards to some of the guys, and they're like, "Okay, well, you're okay, but you know, you're not, you're not there yet." And I was like, "Oh, like that," and that that was the trigger for me to like, mm -hmm. I need to go somewhere else where I'm surrounded by people that are really good, that are even now be I wanted to be taught by professional artists. Um, so the work ethic and, and the drive to, to be really professional, to be a professional, is I think one of the things that got me to, the, to, to getting the first job and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I think once you're actually in a job, the work ethic is equally as important because like I think my first, one of my first jobs was on Real Steel and, mm -hmm. or Real Steel or, or Halo or something like that. And we had to do a, a suit in like, in two days or something, three days. And so we all kind of combined together to do it. And so I wanted to, I was new there, it was probably a few weeks in, and I, I wanted to kind of... This is at, uh, just for everyone who doesn't know, this is at Legacy Effects. Yes, yeah, this is at Legacy. And I, I kind of just took some leaps, 
like I thought I was good enough. I took some leaps. So uh, he was like, all right, we're going to do this suit. What parts does everybody want to do? And typically the chest and the helmet are like the two most important parts, right? The helmet's the, the face of the character. So I, I think immediately I was like, I'll do the helmet. Like I was, I hadn't been there for more than like three weeks. And I was like, I'm going to do the helmet. And they were like, okay. Audacious. Audacious. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, good, <laughs> good luck. We're going to have to rebuild this once you screw it up. And uh, like they, they said, were gonna, yeah, well, what's remarkable? Yeah. Is, they said, yes. They were going to give me the rope. They were going to give me the rope to choke myself <laughs> with. But uh, I ended up doing it, and I got it. And I think that was like, you know, just started taking some, like, some leaps. And so, yeah. so Iron Man came along and was like, I want to do Iron Man. It's like, okay, like you want to do, I want to do Hulk. I want to do Hulk. Like if there was a, if there was a project that I wanted, I would, I would, jump on it. And if if they, if they would say yes, I would take it. And if they wouldn't, you know. It's no harm, no foul to me. I just I don't get that one. Um, what was uh, Josh? Let's talk about what drove that, because that's mm -hmm. num number one. Before we, I, I gotta ask you more about this, but mm -hmm. the points you made are so key, and we we all agree with them. Uh, dedication, passion, striving mm -hmm. to be the best and learn mm -hmm. from the best, very important, mm -hmm. and uh, obviously work ethic. Uh, what were you? You know, a lot of people in this world. A lot of artists in this world and people in general are so afraid of taking chances because they fear they will fail and be ridiculed and and mm -hmm. you know that's really the main thing that stands in people's way. What made you think uh, that it was okay to take that risk at a new job? It's so audacious that you asked for those huge uh, um. opportunities. I'm sure part of you was like, "Can I pull this off?" <laughs> uh, what what allowed you to get through that? Because that's so key to yeah. any artist. They have to get through that. I think it was just feeling like I feeling like first off I thought I could do it. Like if it wasn't something that I if I questioned that I could do it, like if I didn't think my skills were quite to that level, maybe I wouldn't jump on something like that. Like I if a pitch came in and was like we need to design some some you know, the lead character of this and I didn't feel up to the that level, maybe I wouldn't jump into it, but mm -hmm. um, for that stuff, I just felt like I could do it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was really just, I guess, maybe a little cocky, just coming out of school, like I wanted something to prove. Like, and I see that from a lot of students and a lot of kids that come out of school, and they all feel like they're good and that they are entitled to, you know, doing the number, the hero, the the movie, or whatever, and. Uh, so I think it was a little bit of cockiness, like feeling like I could probably do it. And on their side, it was probably seeing that maybe I was a little cocky, and if I was, I needed to be put in my place. Um, <laughs> or, or I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily chalk it up to that. I think it's also uh, that when someone young and raw and not jaded at all comes onto mm -hmm. a team, it's always very exciting, mm -hmm. and you you want to give them a chance because they might really blow you out of the water and they also I think will put other people on notice sure. that there's a new hot shot and it raises everyone's game. I know my father sure. did that. My father always gave my father uh, gave opportunity to young artists all the time um, because maybe he had some belief they could put off but also knowing that the better they did the more everyone noticed what they were doing. It's like you were saying everyone's game starts to go up. You know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. When when great art is happening, it starts feeding itself. So yeah, I, I agree. Like when somebody comes in and they're really enthusiastic about a project and they yeah. like really want to do something, and it's maybe infectious. you're not too in interested, you're like, well, they really like this. I should like this, and you kind yeah. of get into it. So, exactly. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, well, I know that there's going to be a lot of this kind of mutual inspiration happening in your two week webinar with us. Mm -hmm. I think that excited. The fact that people are going to have an opportunity to not be limited to whatever ZBrush instructor happens to be local to them or whatever. The fact that they can directly work with, as you said, a professional at the top of the game, which is what you were looking for mm -hmm. uh, when you were the boss and you know when you when you were a big fish in a small pond in school, you yeah. were wishing you were around professionals. Well, everyone who takes your webinar gets to to live that and work alongside you. And I know that the work that's going to come out of this is going to be very very impressive and. Mm -hmm. I think uh, you're going to find a lot of young competitors who are coming to take. <laughs> I have no doubt of that. <laughs> to teach you something in your yeah. webinar. Yeah, um, I'm hoping I 
I get it inspired by them, and I'll have to step my game up. You know, I think that's I'm, what everybody's happens. Everybody's always wanting to go up. So that's what happens. It starts pinballing around, and everyone uh, does better and better. Let's wrap this up, uh, Chris. I'd like to hand it back to you for a final reminder about how those interested in joining us this Saturday can do so. So we're going to bring up Josh's webinar page one final time, and then we will bid you all a fond farewell on this Thursday, and hopefully see you Saturday. So, Chris, I'm going to hand the baton back to you, dude. Absolutely. Thank you, Matt. Okay, everybody. Um, so, Josh's webinar page, if you'll go to the Stan Winston School uh, homepage and click this webinar button. Uh, let me give it a second to load here. You'll see Josh's webpage located right here. Well, it's the featured page. You can click on it. It will take you to it. We have we have three levels of instruction that we're offering with Josh. Uh, we have a, a watch and chat. Uh, the watch and chat is a moderated text-based chat. Um, we try to answer all of the questions. Um, there is no critique. There is no uh, certificate um, that comes with the watch and chat option. Uh, we only have four seats left for the critique and the professional. Uh, the critique option, you're going to get live on-camera feedback from Josh Herman during the course. Um, you'll be able to show your work to, you, to him. He'll be able to make comments and correct your work and kind of put you on the, the right path during the course. It's wonderful. Uh, as well as you have a, a forum uh, where you can interact with the other students and Josh uh, in between the classes. And there is a certificate from the Stan Winston School that is signed by uh, uh, Josh and Matt. Uh, and it is either completion or mastery, depending upon your grade in the class. And the last level that we have is the professional level. And it comes with everything that the, the critique level comes with. But you get a, a one-hour Google Hangout, a private Google Hangout with Josh to do career development um, portfolio review, any 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 kind of questions that you've ever had about uh, working in the business and how to get into the business. And we would love to see you there. It's two Saturdays. It starts December 7th at uh, uh, 9 a.m. And we would really, really like to see you guys there. All right, Matt. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Once again, that's Chris Vaughn, live, uh, Stan Winston School live coordinator. And whoa, what's happening? <laughs> We've gone into Sorry another about. realm of. In Are you all seeing this? <laughs> okay, we're back. Yeah. We had a weird uh, <laughs> Google Plus Twilight Zone moment. Uh, so, once again, Josh Herman, Marvel visual development digital sculptor. Nicely done. Yeah. Dang, I remember <laughs> it. The longest title. I'm yeah. simply Matt Winston, co-founder of Stan Winston School. That's easier to say. Yeah. And we both would love to see you Saturday, two consecutive Saturdays, 16 hours live with this gentleman, Josh Herman. He's going to share you, share with you tons and tons of tips, secrets, and techniques for taking your ZBrush character sculpting to a professional level. We're very excited that you've uh, joined the instructor roster, Josh. Thank and uh, we can't wait for Saturday. And uh, any final words that, that you might have, Josh, to the audience out there and the internet world? Uh, no, I don't think so. I, I hope you guys kind of join and we can talk a lot more and you know, ask me questions while I'm working. I like being able to be in like a community when I'm working, you know, feed, feed off of each other. Uh, so I hope to see you guys there. All right, cool. Uh, finally, we have to thank the Stan Winston team that, that makes all of this possible. Uh, Jake Borowski on camera, although we're doing this just via Google Hangout today. John Ailes, creative director. Eric Lidoff, co-founder. David Sanger, head of production. Uh, Maggie Sayer, coordinator. Uh, Chris Vaughn, I already said, live coordinator. Teresa, our intern, our editors and web team. Uh, let's see, uh, Yukako Shimada, Damian Ocker, and the Cluj folks, and Andy Franco, and Shannon Gans. There's a lot of people to thank. And we try and be wow. thankful because it does take a village to 
uh, educate all of you in creature effects and character creation. So thanks to all of you for joining us, and we hope to see you Saturday. Once again, I'm Matt Winston, and this is Josh Herman, and we'll see you soon.